Miss Miklos here, and in this lecture we are moving from arithmetic and we are going to be talking about geometric sequences. Okay, so today we're going back to a sequence, but we are going to talk about the difference between arithmetic and geometric. So if we look at number one, okay, I have 4, 12, 36, and it says find the 12th term. And the first thing that I notice is that going from 4 to 12 would be like adding 8, but going from 12 to 36 is not adding 8. So that shows me that there's not a common difference. In fact, in this case, it looks to me like we are perhaps multiplying by something. And we call this our common ratio. And the way that I find the common ratio, which we use the letter R to represent, it is any term divided by the previous term. So in this particular case, I could go ahead and say the ratio is 12 divided by 4, which is 3. And if I look at this, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36. So it does seem like that is true. Now if I wanted to, I could keep doing 36 times 3, that number times 3, and so forth but there must be a quicker way. And of course there's a better way to do this and we are going to once again derive the nth term formula for geometric sequences. So yep, you've guessed it, definitely possible quiz material. So when I'm deriving this, I'm going to start just by writing once again a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, dot dot dot, a sub n. So this actually looks identical to what we did for arithmetic sequences. Okay, however, we know this time instead of adding a common difference, I am multiplying by the common ratio. So the way that we can get to the second term is by doing the first term times the common ratio. Okay, and if we think back to our previous problem, our common ratio was 3, our first term was 4, so we did 4 times 3 and our second value was 12. To get to our third value we multiplied by r again. We did 12 by, times 3 is 36. So if, so if I am doing a sub 1 r times r, that would become a sub 1 r squared. For a sub 4 I'm going to rewrite it as a sub 1 r cubed. So every single time to get to the next term, I'm simply multiplying by r again. And I'm noticing a pattern here. I'm noticing that our exponent on r is one less than our n value. If it's the third term in the sequence, it's r squared. I'm predicting if it was the sixth term of the sequence, it would be r to the fifth. So in this case, if it's the nth term, I'm going to make it r to the n minus 1 power. And this is actually our formula for today. The nth term is equal to the first term times r to the n minus 1 power. And this is the formula that we are going to be using today. Okay, so key things we need to know once again. So a sub n, just remember, is any term in our sequence a sub 1 is always our first term. Really the new thing in this formula is r, which is our common ratio, and we said earlier in this lecture that r is any term divided by the previous term. And then last but not least, this n value is the placement in the sequence. So let's go back to number 1. We have already established that our ratio was any term divided by the previous term, which is 3. I know that a sub 1 is 4. We're trying to find the 12th term, so that means n is equal to 12. So my formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So I'm going to say a sub 12 equals 4 times 3 to the 12 minus 1 power. And definitely when we're looking at problems like this, 
order of operations comes into play because I know that I need to go ahead and do 3 to the 11th power before I can multiply because exponents come before multiplication. Today, definitely it's going to be important that we have our calculators because we're going to be dealing with some pretty big numbers here. So when I do 3 to the 11th times 4, I get that the 12th term in the sequence is 708,588. Okay, so once again, key thing for me is figuring out what is our ratio based on these values and knowing this formula. I spoke earlier in this chapter about the fact that we need to have at least three terms to distinguish what type of sequence this is. Okay, so a lot of times on, on our chapter test, we will have a problem that looks like this, where it's not telling us if it's geometric or arithmetic. And we would need to use our knowledge by looking at those terms to figure out, am I adding to get to the next term or am I multiplying to get to the next term? Okay, let's do another one. This time, um, they're telling us a sub 1, r, and a sub 18. So the first question I should always have is, is this arithmetic or is it geometric? This one, I know right away it's geometric because it says R. Okay, so that's a huge key for us. So I know automatically I'm using A sub N equals A sub 1 times R to the N minus 1 power. So that means that A sub 18 equals negative 1 times negative 2 to the 18 minus 1 power. And one thing I want to point out when our ratio is negative, that means that in our sequence it's going to rotate positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, which is just going to seem kind of weird because um, that's very different from arithmetic where it was always increasing or always decreasing. So continuing with this problem, I have a sub 18 is equal to negative 1 times negative 2 to the 17th power. Once again, I'm going to have to go ahead and put this into my calculator. And when I put this into my calculator, using parentheses is important, or just my knowledge that this overall value here should be negative because I'm taking a negative number to an odd exponent. When I multiply this negative value by negative 1, I know my final term here, or our 18th term, should be a positive value. And in fact, it ends up being 131,072. So a lot of our problems today are not going to get a ton tougher than this. Okay, it's really just making sure we understand how to tell is it geometric or arithmetic, and are we feeling confident with this new formula. Now this is where it can get a little bit tougher just because we're dealing with fractions. And I want to stress once again that we should never be rounding. We are looking to have exact values as our answer. So math frac should be your best friend on your calculator. And sometimes we will even see that it is beneficial to do the numerator and the denominator separately and then reduce them Okay, and I would know that that's happening if I use math frac and it does not convert it into a decimal or into a fraction. So our answer should be exact. Now, if you get a decimal, if you get um, a fraction that can be converted into a decimal that ends, like um, three over two, we've seen previously where we wrote that as one point five. That is completely fine because that's not rounding. Okay, the key thing I need to give exact values. So looking back at this problem, um, we know that a ratio of one-fifth really means like I'm dividing by five. Okay, so once again, I'm using a sub n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one power. The eighth term is equal to 25 times one over five to the eight minus one power. So a sub eight equals 25 times one-fifth to the seventh power. Okay, and if you did this separately, you would end up getting 25 over 78125. And what I mean by separately 
is doing 1 to the 7th times 25 is 25. 5 to the 7th power is 78,125. Now I know this reduces further and we do always need to reduce our answers. 25 actually goes into both of those so I get 1 over 3,125. Okay and I've talked a lot previously about using our calculators and I promise you if you are good at knowing how to deal with fractions in your calculator you have a head start in this section. If that's something that you struggle with I would definitely spend time practicing that because I want you to get those problems with fractions correct on the test. And you can imagine if our sequences are this big what the heck are our series going to look like when we are adding all the terms in the sequence together? So number four is actually our last example because um, once again this is pretty repetitive today. We're really just introducing this formula. Um, number four, I have no clue, is this arithmetic, is it geometric? Now obviously um, since this is our geometric day my guess would be geometric but we need to figure out do we have a ratio? So I'm doing 5 fourths over 1 half because I know it's any term divided by the previous term. 5 fourths times 2 over 1 is 5 over 2. And let's just double check. 1 half times 5 halves is 5 fourths. 5 fourths times 5 halves is 25 over 8. So it definitely does work. So now I'm going to say a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. We're trying to find the twelfth term. So I have 1 half times 5 halves to the 12 minus 1 power. So I have a sub 12 equals 1 half times 5 halves to the eleventh power. And this is one that I think we're going to get some really large numbers. So I'm going to do 5 to the 11th power separately. And I get 4, 8, 8, 2, 8, 1, 2, 5. And then I'm going to do 2 to the 11th separately. And I get 2,048. Now, I know that nothing in here is going to simplify. Um, I mean, obviously, 2 doesn't go into this. But the other way I could see is this is in term of prime factors so my numerator is just in terms of five I do not have a multiple of five in the denominator likewise my denominator is just multiples of two and I do not have a multiple of two in my numerator so I know that it's not going to reduce when I multiply straight across I get four eight eight two eight one two five so that is a giant numerator over two times two thousand forty eight is 4,096. So this is the twelfth term in this sequence. Okay, so once again, um, finding the ratio, I definitely need to verify is it a ratio or am I adding a common difference each time? And making sure that we feel confident working with all of these fractions.